Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and you've reached the Book of Mormon Lecture Series. I've been teaching seminary and institute for the last 11 years, and uh, this is an attempt to do a deep dive into the Book of Mormon itself. I'm hoping that you'll find this uplifting and edifying. This is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but every attempt has been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. So if you're ready for a deep dive into the Book of Mormon, here we go. Hi, and welcome back to the podcast. Uh, this is Brad Constantine, and this lesson will be covering 1 Nephi chapter 12. This chapter is pretty self-explanatory, so there may not be a whole lot of narrative or comments, uh, just because it's uh, pretty understandable the way it's written. This uh, We're in the middle of Nephi's vision that his father saw. Makes me wonder, too, um, that his father must have seen a lot. Uh, if he's seeing everything his father saw, the abridgment that we have of Lehi's dream doesn't include near as much as what we're seeing here from Nephi. So this, uh, this must be quite a lot of, of vision here that both Lehi and Nephi are having. Most of this is going to be about the Nephites and uh, what's going to happen to their civilization um, up until the time that the Nephites are destroyed. So that's uh, the purpose and the, the summary of this particular chapter. So uh, let's get into this. Chapter 12, verse 1. And it came to pass that the angel said unto me, Look, and behold thy seed, meaning the Nephites, and also the seed of thy brethren, or the Lamanites. And I looked and beheld the land of promise, the Americas, and I beheld multitudes of people, yea, even as it were in number, as many as the sand of the sea. Now this is a pretty common expression uh, that just means there's a lot of people. Verse 2, And it came to pass that I beheld multitudes gathered together to battle one against the other, and I beheld wars and rumors of wars, and great slaughters with the sword among my people. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, I'm sorry, that, and it came to pass that I beheld many generations pass away after the manner of wars and contentions in the land, and I beheld many cities, yea, even that I did not number them. And it came to pass that I saw a mist of darkness on the face of the land of promise, and I saw lightnings, and I heard thunderings and earthquakes, and all manner of tumultuous noises, and I saw the earth and the rocks that they rent, and I saw mountains tumbling into pieces. So what Nephi is seeing here is the great earthquake that occurred um, at Jesus' crucifixion. <clears throat> and so he's uh, seeing this whole thing. Now, Elder Nibley, Brother Nibley said, it is a very accurate description of an earthquake that registers eight on the Richter scale all the details and things that happened. So as you read into 3rd Nephi chapter 8 and you notice all the things that are happening in that chapter regarding the earthquake and everything, Brother Nibley believes that that's probably about an 8 on the Richter scale. <clears throat> Continuing verse 4, And I saw the plains of the earth, that they were broken up, and I saw many cities, that they were sunk. And I saw many that were burned with fire, and I saw many that did tumble to the earth because of the quaking thereof. And it came to pass, after I saw these things, I saw the vapor of darkness that had passed from off the face of the earth. And behold, I saw multitudes who had not fallen because of the great and terrible judgments of the Lord. The cataclysm is associate, associated with the destruction of the wicked, but a shadow and a type of the final destruction of the ungodly at the second coming are described in detail in 3 Nephi chapter 8. Verse 6, And I saw the heavens open, and the Lamb of God descending out of heaven, and he came down and showed himself unto them. So this is Jesus' appearance to the Nephites after his ascension. Verse 7, And I also saw and bear record that the Holy Ghost fell upon twelve others, and they were ordained of God and chosen. And the angel spake unto me, saying, Behold the twelve disciples of the Lamb, who are chosen to minister unto thy seed. Now the question comes up, are these twelve disciples also apostles, or is there a difference here? Uh, let me just read you this comment. The Nephite 12, though generally designated in the Book of Mormon as disciples, were, of course, apostles in the full and complete sense of the word. They were called, ordained, and sent forth to be special witnesses of the name of Christ to the Nephite people. Regarding the manner in which the Nephite 12 were to bestow the Holy Ghost, the Nephite record attests, and he called them by name, saying, Ye shall call on the Father in my name, in mighty prayer, and after ye have done this, ye shall have power to to him, that to him upon whom ye shall lay your hands, ye shall give the Holy Ghost, and in my name shall ye give it, for thus do mine apostles. Joseph Smith wrote to John Wentworth that the Book of Mormon tells us that our Savior made his appearance upon the continent, 
upon this continent after his resurrection, that he planted the gospel here in all its fullness and richness and power and blessing, that, that they had apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists, the same order, the same priesthood, the same ordinances, gifts, powers, and blessing as were enjoyed on the eastern continent. That was uh, Millet and McConkie. Uh, verse 9, And he said unto me, Thou rememberest the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Behold, they are they who shall judge the twelve tribes of Israel. Wherefore, the twelve ministers of thy seed shall be judged of them, for ye are the house of Israel. In other words, the twelve apostles in, the, in Israel will be the judges of the twelve apostles in the Nephites, among the Nephites. Verse 10, And these twelve ministers whom thou beholdest, shall judge thy seed, and behold, they are righteous forever. For because of their faith in the Lamb of God, their garments are made white in his blood. And the angel said unto me, Look, and I looked, and beheld three generations pass away in righteousness, and their garments were white, even like unto the Lamb of God. And the angel said unto me, These are made white in the blood of the Lamb, because of their faith in him. And I, Nephi, also saw many of the fourth generation who passed away in righteousness. So that's about 300 years after Jesus' arrival. 13, And it came to pass that I saw the multitudes of the earth gathered together. <clears throat> and the angel said unto me, Behold thy seed, and also the seed of thy brethren. And it came to pass that I looked and beheld the people of my seed gathered together in multitudes against the seed of my brethren. And they were gathered together to battle. Now he's talking here about the final battle among the Nephites and Lamanites. And the angel spake unto me, saying, Behold the fountain of filthy water which thy father saw, yea, even the river of which he spake, and the depths thereof are the depths of hell. And the mists of darkness are the temptations of the devil, which blindeth the eyes, and hardeneth the hearts of the children of men, and leadeth them away into broad roads, that they perish and are lost. So here he's giving a brief um, interpretation of some of the elements of the tree that, uh, or of the dream that Lehi had. 18. And the large and spacious building which thy father saw is vain imaginations, and the pride of the children of men, and a great and a terrible gulf divideth these, it divideth them, yea, even the word of the justice of the eternal God, and the Messiah, who is the Lamb of God, of whom the Holy Ghost beareth record, from the beginning of the world until this time, and from this time henceforth and forever. And while the angel spake these words, I beheld and saw that the seed of my brethren did contend against my seed, according to the word of the angel. And because of the pride of my seed and the temptations of the devil, I beheld that the seed of my brethren did overpower the people of my seed. Here's a good comment from Brother Nibley. He says, remember, you have nothing to fear from the Lamanites at all as long as you behave yourselves. They are there to stir you up unto remembrance. Verse 20, And it came to pass that I beheld and saw the people of the seed of my brethren, that they had overcome my seed, and they went forth in multitudes upon the face of the earth. And I saw them gathered together in multitudes, and I saw wars and rumors of wars among them. And in wars and rumors of wars I saw many generations pass away. And the angel said unto me, Behold, these shall dwindle in unbelief. And it came to pass that I beheld after they had dwindled in unbelief, they became a dark and loathsome and a filthy people, full of idleness and all manner of abominations. That's the end of chapter 12. Um, but this is showing here the outcome of what's going to happen among the Lamanites and Nephites. Um, even after the Nephites were killed off, the Lamanites continued to kill themselves off. And there's lots of wars among the Lamanites even after they have killed off all the, ne all the Nephites. And we know that at that point, they were always seeking to find other Nephites to kill. And that's why Moroni had to uh, stay away from them and to avoid them as much as possible so that they wouldn't kill him. Um, I'm thankful for the Book of Mormon and the stories that we have and know that these things are true in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you like this episode, you can like it and share it. And if you have any comments, please leave them. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to address those too. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye.